Good day everybody, this is Kevin from Construction Scale Model Imports uh, in Australia doing yet another video on the hydraulic wheel loader. Uh, let me first start by thanking all those people who sent us emails uh, uh, with the questions about this machine. So yes, do keep those questions coming in. We will try to answer your questions and help you with the product. Um, we also want to thank JD Constructions uh, Eagle Machinery for providing us with this machine for the review uh, and the video and the details uh, of this particular machine. So thank you to them also. Okay, let's start. Well, today we're going to talk about the physical dimensions on this machine, the weight, the size, uh, the upgrades that can be done uh, to improve the machine. Not that it's a bad machine, so you can always upgrade uh, anything you have. So how to make it better uh, and how to improvise it so you can make a, a good decision when you plan to buy this particular machine. So let's get this thing rolling. Now, the dimensions that I'm going to give you and the weight are approx. Uh, do not quote these dimensions. Um, you can measure at different points, so your dimensions will probably be different than mine. So they're just a basic rough idea. So let, let's get this thing rolling. So what we have, um, the length. So they've got about 820 mil roughly. The bucket we have is 240 mil. The height we have is 280. The width from outside of the tire to outside of the tire, we have roughly 245. Um, the engine bonnet roughly is about 220. Um, the height of the bucket from the tube to the height is about 120 mil. So uh, the weight is anywhere from 20 to 22 kgs. That's the weight. Now, uh, physically, all machine, the whole machine, or uh, all of the machine is made in metal. There is the only plastic parts is probably the interior of the cab, the lights, the hoses, the tires. Majority of this machine is actually metal, full solid metal. Um, the case is obviously mild steel, probably got a jig, it's been spot welded to give you that profile. It's quite thick. It's about 1.5 or 1.75 mil thick plate. Uh, the bucket is solid mild steel once again. It's welded nicely, beautifully, and then given a good coat of paint. What I like is all the details where all the pivoting pins are secured in place, just like a real machine. So they've got locking arrangements. Headlight housings, one, two, three, four, five, six, all metal. Um, they have designed it well because when I install the LEDs inside these housing, you actually install the LEDs and it's drilled quite well. So they're not floppy in the housing. They actually are quite firm and they stay in the location. Very easy to route the wiring. So you've got two lights here. I've used these as work lights, so I haven't put indicators here. They actually go in, they go underneath the cab. They then come up here. And on the top, I fitted my ML4 switch from Silvernaut. Uh, the reason why I use ML4 is because you can use the indicators, uh, work lights, and low work lights also. Uh, two set of lights here, indicator here, indicator here, indicator here, indicator here. I haven't finished the wiring yet. I'm working still, but I thought it would be great. When the machine's pulled apart, you guys could have a look inside also what it looks like in the engine bay, what all things are in there. So um, let me just show you how I've installed my wiring. So the wiring is not yet complete. So that's the reason why you will find uh, some wires sticking out. Here you'll be able to see the ML4 on the inside up here. Uh, that's stuck with a two-sided sticky tape. And then I'm using one of the channels from the radio uh, to control this particular right. Now let's go to this uh, radio. Let's see what we have on the radio, okay? So, Fly Sky Radio, this function is set by the manufacturers for start and horn in the sound module. This machine did come with the sound module, so we've got start, horn, start and horn on this function. Uh, as usual, we've got the forward, we've got the reverse, we've got the left, we've got the right. Here we have the crowd for the bucket, open and close or up and down for the bucket, and here we've got the boom, raise and lower. I've used this particular switch for my light functions, so you could use any one that you wish. Uh, this particular one is for the two-speed, uh, this is for the hydraulic pump, sorry, uh, on and off. 
and this one is for the three speed gearbox so that's where we are with the radio and what you can do so if you want to have a closer look at the radio here's the radio it's got a good good digital display the receivers are quite economically priced so you could also use this particular radio for any other truck if you want to if you want to combine it with something else now let me bring this camera a little bit closer i've explained in the previous videos uh the kind of detail that this machine has you know let me so let me get this closer so you can see so i've used this machine in the sand for a while so you probably see a bit of dirt on it we've got some great uh, wear plates here uh, some more wear plates here all the teeth are actually screwed to the machine so you can actually replace this just like the real machine um, this is really really cool so you've got locking arrangements on the pivoting pins just like the real machine and that's pretty cool because this is not what you see generally in all models but this this kind of detail is really good of course you will see this kind of detail but it comes with a price uh, good hexagonal bolts on the cylinders to simulate like the real machine uh, hydraulic hoses are beautifully uh, rooted so there's no mess up there good linkage points mud guards are full metal tires are solid good detail on the rims of the tire once again you've got good bo hex bolts in there uh, good detail on the step uh, on the other side you have a tank and the tank is actually simulated like a real tank um, good cab interiors so you can see there's a there's a joystick on on the on the right hand side uh, details on the dash you also have the foot pedals on the inside uh, cushioning seat so that these kind of little details make a lot of difference. Now, um, I have put beacons on this one. It was a little bit tricky because, as you can see, this, this cover is provided by the manufacturer, which is a great idea, I think, to hide all the screws um, that is used to bolt this roof to the cab to make it more sturdy. So they provide you with a two-sided sticky tape. It fits beautifully and covers all the screws on the top. Um, I had to drill the holes, mount my beacons, route my cable, and I've got to use better quality sticky tape. So I'm still working on that, and that's the reason why you see what you see, okay? So it's not a part of bad quality, but it's just uh, the way uh, I've been working on it and trying to fit it. But once it's completed, it will be, it'll be beautiful. Now, going back to the engine bay, I'm not sure if you can see this. Uh, I'm going to try to bring it up here. Okay. This, they, they have designed this on two trays, so you've got two trays there, um, fixing all the electronics and things like that. I will talk about the electronics in the next video. So, on this video, we've just, we've just touched about the physical aspects uh, and the machine in general. On the next video, we will then go into the engine bay and see what is inside the engine bay and how we have done that stuff. It's Kevin from Construction Scale Models. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at info at csmi.com.au. Great, thank you.